I am Kevin Ioli, and I always enjoy talking to my next guest, uh, the welterweight champion of the world, a guy who has been pretty much at the top of the ranking since he turned pro in 2012 after the Olympics. Of course, that's Errol Spence Jr. Errol, how you doing, my friend? Doing good. Can't complain. Everything's going great. I am glad to hear that uh, on uh, April 16th at uh, uh, AT&T Stadium and your hometown of uh, Dallas, I guess, Arlington, Texas, to be exact, uh, you are going to be fighting uh, your Dennis Ugas in a, a pay-per-view fight, an interesting fight. Uh, but before we get into Ugas and the challenge he presents to you, I, I have to ask you about your eye. Uh, uh, we were all worried about you when you had to pull out of the Manny Pacquiao fight with the detached retina. Um, how was your sight? And, and can you fill us in a little bit on uh, what happened and how you, you know, how you first noticed the injury? Um. I feel like, you know, it happened in sparring and, um, you know, I heard a pop and uh, I was like, ah, my eye. And then, you know, I took probably like 15 seconds and then you know, I went out there and spar <laughs> sparred some more because oh. I really didn't know what was going on or anything about it. But, you know, I started seeing like like little clouds and things like that off of my peripherals. But, you know, I really, you know, sometimes as, as you know, athletes, you know, you really – you know, don't worry about it because, you know, you don't want, you know, anybody professional looking at it. Then the next thing you know, you know, you can't fight or do anything. So, you know, I, I ignored it and things. And then when I went to go get my, when I went to go get, do my eye test, which I should have done. Before, before you got to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. You know, nah, I did my eye test in Dallas and he oh. was like, man, something look, looks up in, looks weird in your eye. You know, I think you need to go see, you know, a, a specialist. And uh, he said, I got a couple of specialists, whatever. He was like, do you see a cloud? And, you know, I'm asking, like, I don't really don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's like a little cloud. I'm trying to make it, you know, seem like it's just some small, but I like I still see and stuff like that. And then, you know, I basically, you know, told my coach and dad and all that. And then, and I was still training and stuff. And then we flew out to Vegas to go see, you know, the um, basically the the um, the boxing people. And uh, they looked in my eye and stuff. And then, like, in a matter of, like, 10 seconds, it was like, it was like, nah. It was like, it was like I got some good news and bad news. It said, good news is it's, it's not all the way detached. So you can, you know, stick it back on, put it, put it back on. But the bad news is, you know, you're not fighting. And then, you know, he was just telling me that I could lose my eye and all this if I fight and things like that. If I would fight, if they didn't catch it, I'd lose my eye and stuff like that. You know, at, the, at that time, I'm just like, you know, I, I wouldn't really, you know, worried about them. Like, I'm, what if I promise you that, you know, I'm not going to get touched that much. <laughs> like. And I got another eye too. So, <laughs> well, you know, Errol. I, I mean, I want to ask you this because I know anybody who knows you or has been around you. You know, you're a father. You're a family man. You, your kids are at the uh, at the gym a lot when you're working out. Did that pop into your head? Like, you know, hey, I have. I'm a young guy, and I have a long life with these kids, and I want to be able to see them, watch them grow up. And what am I doing here? Uh, nah. I mean, I feel like because even. I feel like, I mean, I had one eye, <laughs> so I feel like I had another eye. So, I mean, even if I lose this eye, you know, I can, I can easily see my kids and grow up them with this other eye. So, you know, I just felt like, you know, I just still want to fight the competitor in me, you know, still want to, want to fight, even though I know now that, right. and now that that moment is gone, like, I'm like, man, that's foolish, you know, still trying to fight, but you know, just a competitor in me and it's being so close to the fight, you know, you know, I just wanted, you know, just the opportunity just to fight. We would have had to call you, uh, change your nickname from Earl the True Spence to Earl the Pirate with that patch on the eye if you would have <laughs> gone ahead and done that. So no. anyways, um, one last question. How difficult, you know, forget the eye injury and just the fact that you lost a chance to fight a legend like Manny Pacquiao. I know when you fought Mikey Garcia, Manny went into the ring. You were, you know, the, you know that was a, a big night for you. And Manny uh, now, of course, is retired. Uh, how dif How disappointing was that for you that you never got a chance to test your skills against him? Um, you know, it was disappointing to me that I just didn't get the fight because I feel like, you know, it would have catapulted me to, you know, the crossover appeal and, you know, and things like that. But, 
Um, I wasn't too terrible, terribly disappointed that I didn't get the fight because, you know, I knew he was, you know, I'm not going to say just all the way shelling himself, but he wasn't the same Manny Pacquiao with the, right. you know, the ferociousness that, you know, Manny Pacquiao usually brings to the fight and, and fights. You know, it wasn't that. It wasn't the Manny Pacquiao that fought, you know, Margarita and Ricky Hatton and just, you know, try to tr totally destroy you. So, you know, I wasn't too messed up about it. But, you know, I definitely wanted that fight. I felt like, you know, that was a huge fight for myself. So, uh, what I guess, you know, you're talking about uh, Manny Pacquiao that totally destroyed you. Let's talk about you. I mean, you're a guy that I, I always thought was one of the hard punchers and, you know, destroying people. All of a sudden, you kind of got away from those KOs. Uh, so, against Ugas, uh, who was, you know, those Cuban boxers are smart defensively. Uh, he obviously uh, uh, knows what's going on. You think he can finish Ugas? Um, if the opportunity come, I definitely can. Um, I feel like, you know, this is the, you know, the probably the happiest I've been in camp, you know, in a, in a minute. And, you know, I think that related to just, you know, losing weight and just fighting against my body so much, trying to, you know, make the weight and just wearing sauna suits and all different other type of stuff to lose the weight. And, you know, now, you know, I'm basically, you know, drinking more water and, you know, trying to lose it the right way. So we'll see. But right now, you know, I'm very happy. And, um, you know, training camp be going well. And it's the first time, you know, I've, I've really been happy in training camp. That's awesome. A couple other questions. We'll let you roll here. Um, Ugas, you know, his style is different than most people. Uh, do you see any vulnerability in him? I wonder if, you know, you're a good body puncher, if, if he might be vulnerable to some of your shots to the body. I mean, definitely vulnerable to the body. But, you know, I think, Ugas, he's a guy that he likes to fight too. Like if you catch him with a good shot, you know, anything like that, you know, he gets pumped up and he wanna sit there and fight. So, you know, we'll see who that play, who that play into, you know, this fight. So if he's gonna sit there after I catch him, sit there and wanna trade back or wanna fight back. You feel like uh, the winner of this fight, and I know you believe that is going to be yourself. Uh, you know, you have three of the belts there. You'll be, uh, you know, you're kind of in a dominant position. Do you feel like that'll put you in the, the dominant position in the welterweight division? And of course, the guy who everybody wants to ask you about, who it's kind of like the modern day Mayweather Pacquiao question. Will Spence fight Crawford? Uh, do you think that that puts you in a, in a dominant position with Terrence? Uh, I mean, I feel like I always, you know, been, you know, in a dominant position, you know, just, you know, somebody else just, you know, fighting my dominance. <laughs> so, um, you know, you know, I feel like, you know, it's something that can, you know, definitely happen if, you know, everybody realistic about, you know, certain situations and stuff like that. But, you know, it's, it's not something that, you know, I took off the table just yet. Ready. Well, let's before we let you go, we got to hear a prediction on the fight with Ugas. I know you're going to say Spence victory. Are you going to? Uh, are we going to see him down for the ten count? Um, hopefully, I think it's going to be you know a very exciting fight. Um, Ugas, he's a guy that comes to fight and brings the fight. I'm the guy that comes to fight, bring the fight. He's never in in fights I've seen. He's never in non-exciting fights. I'm never in non-exciting fights, and um, I think it's going to be you know, one for the books for how long it lasts. All right, brother. Well, we want to see a good one. I'm glad that you're healthy. Glad uh, you're back uh, having fun in the gym. Look forward to seeing you fight. Errol Spence Jr., April 16th versus your Dennis Ugas in Arlington, Texas. Thank you, Errol. Thank you. Appreciate it, brother.